and we're live. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Claire. I am the event coordinator for Village Books in Bellingham and Linden, Washington. I am delighted that you are joining us this evening for this special um, event. This is actually my first virtual demo, like a cooking demo that I've hosted. So I'm excited for I'm excited for tonight. Um, but uh, before we get started, a few things to know about Crowdcast. There's a little green button in the upper right hand corner of your screen that says follow. If you click on that, you'll see, you'll have access to our Crowdcast channel and the events that are that we have lined up. We have lots of events coming down the road, so I suggest you click on follow and see what we what we have coming up. In fact, speaking of events that are coming up just tomorrow night, that's Tuesday, October 20th at 7 p.m., I'm going to be interviewing uh, Sierra Crane Murdoch. She wrote this incredible book called um, Yellow Bird. And this is Oil, Murder, and a Woman's Search for Justice in Indian Country. This is a fascinating story, um, all true, um, that takes place on, in North Dakota during the oil boom. Um, so that's going to be tomorrow night, 7 p.m., October 20th. And let's see, happily, we have... Um, we are able to offer our programming um, in our virtual readings gallery for free. However, if you did make a contribution at registration, we really do appreciate it to, to, to support our event programming. We are so glad that we're able to still provide this programming for free. But to those of you who kicked in a couple of, of dollars just to, to help us um, keep this going, we appreciate it. And, and if you didn't, that's fine too. Like I said, we are glad that we are able to provide this programming for, programming for free. Um, so we're going to keep the chat enabled. I see that someone's already chimed in there on the right side of the screen. Um, it's it's we encourage you. We encourage comments and questions all through the event this evening. So if at any time you have a question about what you're seeing and hearing, or if you just want to make a comment to give some feedback about that, please uh, feel free to do that in the chat. I do want to remind you, though, um, that our virtual readings gallery is a safe space. Any user who exhibits offensive, hateful, or inappropriate behavior will be dismissed from the event immediately. So, and then another important button that you see on the screen is the one center screen right there that says purchase ZooFit Safari here. That is a link directly to the Village Books website where you can purchase copies of the book. All of our copies are signed by the author. So we encourage you to um, click through that link and make a purchase and, and in so doing support um, a fabulous author and a fabulous independent bookstore. So, and I think that's it for my, oh, and if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, if you're watching the recorded version of this on YouTube, if you look down in the description of this video, you'll see a link also to our website there. Okay, so now to our featured author. PJ Bevan is a fitness consultant using the principles of zookeeping, positive reinforcement, enrichment, and conservation to help others achieve success. PJ focuses on making exercise and nutrition a positive, engaging, and sustainable experience. She lives in Blaine with her husband and their two cats, and she's here this evening to present her new book, Zoofit Safari, a five-week jumpstart to your journey in fitness, health, and saving the world. So without further ado, let me just welcome PJ to the stage. And there we go. Take it away, PJ. Thanks so much for joining me again. Hi, I'm PJ uh, with Zoofit, and I'm again super excited. I'm going to talk to you all about uh, ways that we can find empowering ways so we can find our way to fitness and health um, and also connecting that to conservation. So kind of to help guide me and guide you guys along the way, I did come up with a, a, a wonderful Halloween themed a PowerPoint presentation. And since I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about myself in the PowerPoint, I'm just going to go ahead and have Claire just go ahead and bring that, bring that up for me. And I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be smaller, but again, we're we're gonna be going through uh, going through quite a bit of information, telling you all about the book, telling you all about ZooFit, the program, which is which probably has some questions 
uh, on people's mind. What is ZooFit? So ZooFit is my fitness program where I teach everybody to eat clean, live green, and train positive so we can connect to the earth in a healthy and positive way. So uh, Claire, go ahead and switch to the next one. And uh, so get, let give you guys an idea of what uh, where ZooFit came from. I was a zookeeper for 15 years. I worked all over the country. I worked from Florida with marine mammals uh, to Louisiana, North Carolina, and then eventually made my way up to the Pacific Northwest where I tip, I basically call the, the Space Needle was the mothership that called me home. Um, it was basically, I found my home here. But I was a zookeeper at Woodland Park Zoo. That's me with Watoto, our African elephant at Woodland Park Zoo. And I was there for about five years and I started noticing that my body uh, was pretty much breaking down. You can go ahead and, and click. Um, and when I was breaking down, again, my knees were hurting, my back hurt all the time. I was getting really lethargic. I had this dream job, I mean, working with elephants, and I was absolutely miserable. And it was, it was one of those uh, light bulb moments where I say lightning struck my brain, and I basically said, you know, something's got to give, and it is not <laughs> going to be this job. And I came to this realization that I can't take care of the animals. I can't give them 100% unless I start taking care of myself, unless I'm giving myself 100%. And that's basically where the, the birth of ZooFit uh, actually started, was at that moment. But I decided I wanted to go about it a little bit differently, because I've been down the fitness path dozens of times before. Uh, and you can go ahead and click that again, Claire. I've been down that path dozens of times but each time I fell off the bandwagon, and I think it's mainly because I wasn't enjoying it. It was something I forced myself to do. I guilted myself, um, berated myself, shamed myself, and it wasn't a fun experience. And so, of course, I always, you know, I would always fall off the bandwagon. So instead, I decided to make it a positive experience by using the same principles. Since I was doing this for the animals, that was my big why. I was doing this for the animals. I would do that. I would use the same principles that I use to work with the animals. So that would be animal training methods of positive reinforcement, um, what we would call shaping, breaking down behaviors into smaller steps rather than trying to get the whole big picture all at once, and developing uh, those healthy habits little bit by little bit and reinforcing those behaviors. So again, making an incentives, putting motivation in the bank is what I would call that, making it very empowering and a very positive experience. I also incorporated enrichment, made, made working out, made nutrition fun and engaging. That was super important. But the biggest thing for me that made the biggest difference of all was the biggest principle, the reason why we have zoos in the first place, is connecting to conservation. All of my healthy habits that I was incorporating was connected to conservation in some unique and interesting way. And I've again found that fitness was a positive, empowering, and impactful experience in this way. And also was making the world just a little bit better by, by shining my best self shining through. So that is what ZooFit's all about, helping your best self shine through so we can be radiant exemplars for the world for ourselves, for our families, our communities, and for the entire planet. So that's ZooFit in a nutshell, how it came to be. Now, I did leave the zoo field, and I became a fitness consultant, a nutritionist, um, a fitness trainer, and even a, a what we call an optimized coach in helping people uh, really unleash their best versions of themselves and I found that there is a common denominator about most of my clients. And we can flip to the next, uh, next screen. And that was a lot of people still come to me after a workout, after or um, during a coaching session. 
I'm always asking me, what's the best diet? What's the, what's the best exercise that I should do day in, day out? What's the one healthy habit that I should focus on that'll have the best impact on my health? And actually the answer is, uh, it is kind of, it depends. So we can switch that. The best answer I can tell you for the best diet, the best exercise, the best healthy habit is the one that you can sustain, that is the most sustainable impact on your life and on the planet. And what that basically means is it's something that you can do for the rest of your life. If you cannot stand the thought of never eating meat again for the rest of your life, the vegetarian diet is not for you. The same thing goes for, for your exercise. If, you, uh, if you're think, thinking that uh, burpees or lunges or squats or whatever, push-ups are just the worst exercise that you could possibly imagine, that's not the one that you're going to, that's going to make fitness fun. So it's the one that you can repeat for the rest of your life, the ones that you can, that you can sustain. But sustainable has another, uh, another connection too, and that is what's best for the planet. Now, I don't mean, again, we're going to uh, upheaval, turn your world upside down and make, make you, if you're driving to work, make you ride your bike 15 miles each way. If that's not sustainable for you, once again, that's going to be the, your best impact. What, is, what can you do? What is the one tiny thing that you can do to make a difference in this world? Is that riding your bike to, to work or to the park? Or to uh, to the to the grocery store instead of um, instead of driving your car. Maybe it's simply switching from uh, from water bottles that you buy in the store to a reusable water bottle. Whatever that one small practice that you can do to have a better impact on your life and a better impact on the planet. And that leads us to what we're talking about today. You can go ahead and switch over the Zoo Fit Safari. And that is why I wrote this book. So again, finding, telling, telling many people, there is not one the way. There is no the way towards fitness. There is your way. There's my way. There's Claire's way. There's many different paths to fitness. And so the Zoo Fit Safari does just that. We're going to take you on many different paths. In fact, five weeks, five different paths uh, for, each, for each area. And we're going to find what works best for you, what empowers you, what revs you up, and what fires you up, gets you excited about fitness, gets you excited about uh, your health and well-being, and most importantly also, what gets you excited about taking care of the planet. We can go to the next, next slide. So I've actually split this up. Again, there's five weeks, and I've split it up into three different categories. Each, each week we're going to focus on um, a different eating and nutrition lifestyle. So we have like we have the vegetarian diet, the keto, the paleo, Mediterranean, and even the locavore diet. And we're going to learn a little bit more about what does that entail and how does that help your body. We're also going to focus on di five different workout styles. We have CrossFit, we have boot camps, and we have even again local gyms or going to uh, going to different classes strength training, different different styles of working out. What do you like to do? Uh, what, what fires you up a little bit? And then each week we're going to focus on a different healthy habit, whether that's your sleeping, drinking water, or even your hygiene habits and how that impacts your health and well-being. And then all three of these things tied together show how these, these healthy habits, these eating lifestyles, workout, and habits uh, and wellness habits connect to conservation in a unique and in a positive way. Go ahead and switch. So that is again, the, the beauty of ZooFit and the ZooFit Safari is uh, I do think that developing healthy habits is in stages and uh, we have three different, three different stages when we first start a healthy habit, whether that is uh, working out, whether that's eating right or, again, getting a little bit more sleep. We go through the first stage, is it's unbearable. We can't stand doing this. Uh, we, we want to uh, 
we start wondering why on earth did I sign up for this in the first place? So this might happen actually a couple of days later. So the first couple of days we're fired up, we are revved. The second day after we're sore from a workout, that's when the unbearable comes in. So you're like, why did I sign up for this? This is horrible. This is terrible. Um, it's an unbearable, unbearable position. So that's an unbearable stage. If you can power through it, you get you don't quite yet, you're not quite there yet, and we get the uncomfortable stage. And that is when, yeah, you can see the benefits. It's not, it doesn't completely suck. But there are times when you really rather not have to do this new healthy habit. It's a little uncomfortable. But if you power through that, guys, this is the brilliant part. We get to be unstoppable. So once we go through the un unbearable, uncomfortable, then we get to absolutely unstoppable. And I found that conservation and reinforcing our behaviors with conservation connection is a really powerful way to do just that. So you can see that diagram up on the screen. It's talking about creating a positive feedback loop. So we start doing the healthy habit. Uh, let's again throw in the idea of eating a salad or eating a, a healthy meal um, versus the donuts or the bagels or again something we know that is unhealthy. We, we feel really good. Our body feels good, but, and, and we are psychologically read that, yeah, I did the thing, I feel awesome. And that's going to carry you through uh, most of that cycle. Again, feeling pretty good is what we would call intrinsic motivation. But then you get that upward curve, and that's typically where we find a roadblock, a setback, or, a, what, again, that wall. And that wall usually is a form of temptation or procrastination or lack of motivation it's the there is the donut in the break room um, that I just happened to be walking by and donuts calling my name it's the five more minutes that you want to sleep in and but if you do you're going to miss your workout class it's the it's the uh, it's it is the traffic jam oftentimes of, of, of not having time to work out it's the not having our uh, the YouTube videos or the Netflix that you're binging and you don't want to go to bed at a certain time. It's that roadblock that, that, uh, that stops us from completing that cycle and continuing that healthy habit. So when we have that opportunity to connect those habits to conservation, we find it's not just about us. We're not just getting something out of this, uh, but we are doing this for a bigger and better, a better reason. So, but it's for the entire world. So connecting to conservation, of uh, once again, eliminating the donut. It has it has a uh, has lot of sugar in it. Has other ingredients that may not be not just not healthy for you, but probably isn't very healthy for the planet. We can connect that and not just go over that roadblock, but sometimes powerful enough, we just pummel right through it. Connect connect the dots. Complete the cycle. And then we are in that um, unstoppable stage. Let me go ahead and switch. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit uh, more about uh, about that one specific um, habit. And again, very very uh, timely right now. I'm one of my favorite seasons of the year. I love fall. I love autumn. And I used to absolutely adore Halloween, but now I'm, I'm kind of getting a, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more wary of Halloween, and that's because there is a trick within our treats. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, one of the habits that we that we talk about in ZooFit Safari is one of the habits that helps us eat a little bit healthier. Has a very very strong conservation connection, and that is about palm oil. And this is what I would call a true Halloween horror story. So let's get a little bit of background on this. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Claire. So palm oil, I do feel fortunate, is getting a little bit more media attention. So many of you are listening and saying, nodding your head, saying, yes, I know about palm oil. I know this is a pretty dangerous ingredient. But it is actually a little bit more nefarious than we even imagined. Um, it's an ingredient that most 
food that most of the food industry does not want you to know about, and they do they do hide it in in, in devious ways. There are over 400 different derivatives, different names for palm oil in our products. And it is in about 75% of our processed foods that we eat, whether we're aware of it or not. And so palm oil is a, is a, a small kernel um, on certain palm trees, not every single type of palm. Uh, it is what, uh, and it is a found mostly in Southeast Asia, but it is growing in to other continents as well. Now it's a it's a cheaper uh, product, um, and again, found in Southeast Asia, it's a little bit cheaper to produce because it takes a little less land. It could be a sustainably sourced food, food uh, but it is still what we would call a monoculture. So you can go to the next slide. Monoculture um, agriculture is again one single plant, one single crop that uh, that covers a huge expanse of, of land and this is the problem that we're having with palm oil so it's a monoculture what they basically do is they have to clear out large vast amounts of land to make way for the uh, for the oil palm trees and for the for their crop and the process that they do this is is called slash and burn so what slash and burn is, is exactly what it sounds like they slash off all the trees and then they burn the underbrush. Now this does two very detrimental things to the environment. First of all, it uh, releases car uh, large amounts of carbon into the atmosphere, and that's because the, the land in Southeast Asia is very rich in peat, which is very rich, very rich in carbon. So when they burn it, it's released into the atmosphere. The second thing it does is it displaces the home of hundreds of Asian wildlife species. So the poster children for the uh, for for this uh, for this aspect is the orangutans, and they are being heavily affected by uh, by the palm oil industry themselves. I think you go to the next slide. What we're going to talk about? Sorry, <laughs> is the orangutans. Again, as I mentioned, we're, we'll get to the rain tan in just one second, but the, uh, the palm oil that we're eating is in, again, as I mentioned, so much of the food that we're eating. It's in a lot of the food that we eat, especially this time of the year. It's in all of our baked goods, so those cookies, the cakes, the pumpkin pies. Yes, those pumpkin pies do have some form of palm oil in it. It's in our candies, our chocolates, it's on all of our ice cream. It's even in some of our healthy snacks. So when we go to the store and we're eating, we're going for the healthy snacks, the Nutri-Grain bars, the granola bars, the protein bars. If you look at those packages, they still have palm oil in them or some kind of derivative of palm oil. And yes, guys, if you're looking at the bottom of it, it is in your pumpkin spice lattes. Again, we're not escaping this. Um, anywhere we go, if you're, this is the season, tis the season for pumpkin spice, it's also the season for, for palm oil. And I think now, now we're going to get to the next slide, we're going to talk about orangutans. Uh, so they are the, the poster children for uh, stopping the palm oil crisis because they have lost 30% of their populations in the last 15 years due to the palm oil industry. Uh, there's some, they estimate somewhere between 1,000 to 5,000 orangutans are killed each year. Um, the number may not sound as drastic, uh, considering that, the, again, elephants are killed at a much higher rate. Considering there's only 30 to 40,000 orangutans left in the world, this is a detrimental number. Um, but orangutans are not the only animal affected by the palm oil industry losing their homes um, and, and getting it replaced with uh, with the monoculture uh, palm oil plantations. You can go to the next slide, Claire. There's other animals. We have the hornbills. Uh, this is a beautiful bird. If you're not familiar with the South, uh, Southeast Asian species of hornbill, 
I think Zazu from The Lion King with a, like, a bill that's probably about three times as large and three times as bright and as beautiful. It's an absolutely gorgeous bird. They're found in Southeast Asia around Sumatra and Borneo. And they've lost 45% uh, of their populations, 100% due to the deforestation practices of the palm oil industry. You also have Sumatran tigers, Sumatran rhinos, Sumatran uh, elephants. They're all affected as well. Tigers are, there's only, there are many different subspecies or five different subspecies. The Sumatran is critically endangered. There's only about 400 individuals left. And they're, they're being affected mainly because of the, um, not just the palm oil industry deforestation, they're losing their prey. And they have a unique, problem is that since they're losing their prey, they're seeking out other ways, and this creates what we call human wildlife conflicts, where they're, they're coming into contact with humans more and more, making it very dangerous for the tigers, uh, as well as, as the humans involved. And elephants, we are, we're, we're familiar with elephants, but um, not maybe quite as much as their plight. Um, they, they aren't so much affected by the slash and burn, they're affected later on. Once the palm oil plantations are up and running, uh, that is a new food, so the elephants lost their food source, and lo and behold, there is a huge monoculture plantation of a new food source. Um, they are killed due to uh, them raiding the, the plantations. If you think, if you have a garden at home, you may think that the rabbits or the deer or the, the voles, digging up your garden is a, is a nuisance. Imagine if those rabbits weighed 8,000 pounds and brought five of their buddies around. So think again, this is a livelihood issue for many people in, um, in Indonesia. But again, most of the time, it does end up being a lethal, uh, lethal battle that the elephants do not win. So they do typically use poisons, um, electrocution, and even gunfire to ward off elephants. So this is a pretty nefarious, again, I mentioned this is quite a bit of a horror story uh, that we are experiencing right now with the palm oil industry. And we can go to the next slide. And again, painted a pretty horrific picture. However, that's the end of it. I'm going to actually see if I can. Ah, there we go. <laughs> My battery was running low. <laughs> um, we're, we are, that's the end of the horror story. Again, I've painted a pretty gloomy picture, and I do apologize for that because it's not all doom and gloom. There is a lot of hopes. We have a simple way we're going to flip this around and turn this horror story into something of a hopeful Halloween. So we can go to the next. Next slide, because I'm going to share with you some simple things that we can do day in and day out to have a positive impact on, um, on Asian wildlife and, again, and, and the world in general. And the simple things, again, it is a little bit about avoiding the, the, the palm oil um, industry a little bit, uh, or at least making sure that what we are consuming is as sustainable as possible. So one thing you could do is you know, start reading labels. Um, and don't buy, if you see the products with palm oil in it, don't buy them. There is an app that you can put on your phone. This was created by the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. It's the palm oil app. And it, it's a brilliant app. All you do is scan the items in the store, and it'll ring up and show you if it has palm oil in it or not. Another very simple thing, and kind of covering all your bases is if you're not sure if it has palm oil in it, just eliminate processed food from your diet. You can also do this by uh, substituting alternatives uh, for your favorite treats. So if you love uh, something like peanut butter cups, um, you can find something that, that doesn't have uh, palm oil in it that will satisfy that sweet tooth. And you can also, again, the, the last step, what we're going to be really getting into in just a little bit is making your own treats without the palm oil. So uh, I've often held to the belief that you can eat whatever you want, just make it yourself. <laughs> so 
So those are some simple, simple things that we can do in the grocery store in our own home to have an impact and help save Asian wildlife uh, and, and help a little bit with this, the palm, what we call the palm oil crisis. And we can go to the next slide. I've got my helper here too. He's in the Sullivan. He's probably going to get a little bit loud <laughs> in a minute. Now, so those are some simple things that we can do to help uh, to help with the palm oil crisis. But yeah, you're probably thinking to yourself, eliminate all processed food. Oh my goodness. Simple doesn't always mean easy. So let's let's fix that. Again, that's part of what we're doing with the Zufus Safari. That's what we're gonna do a little bit tonight too. So you can go to the next slide and I'm gonna show you how we do this. In the animal training world where I where I got a lot of my inspiration, we have what we call the ABCs of behavior. And I've turned this into the ABCs of healthy habits. Uh, the, first, it, the first step is what we call activation. We're going to, uh, we're going to have something that uh, tells us now is the time to do your behavior. So you have your activation, your behavior, and then your celebration. So activation starts it. This is your telling you to go ahead and do the thing that you want to do. Behavior is doing it. And celebration is what we're going to do after the behavior. We're going to throw our hands up in the air, give ourselves a high five, or again, that intrinsic feel good, I just did something awesome for myself and for the planet. Now I've read a bunch of books and my favorite person, the, my favorite uh, description of this process is by James Clear. He's got a book called Atomic Habits. Love it. It's a, he says, if you want to build a healthy habit, or if you want to build a new habit, make it obvious, make it easy, and make it awesome. And so that's basically what we're going to do is the activation is going to make it obvious. We're going to install some sort of cue, some sort of signal that will give us no question whatsoever that now is the time, uh, a bright line, but we're going to do what we want to do. The behavior is to make it easy. And then again, breaking it down to small steps. What's the simplest thing that I could do to, to help me move forward in this healthy habit? Is that possibly, um, you know, again, writing out a grocery list versus um, just roaming through the store to find, to find food that I want to eat? And then again, make it awesome. We're, we're going to ignore any of the, or not ignore, but we're going to uh, focus on the positives that we're making, focus on those celebrations. And if we do have a fallback, if we do have a slip, we're going to learn from it. We're going to focus only on the positive aspects of, of, our, of our new behavior. You can go to the next slide. So for our palm oil, uh, our palm oil habit, there's a couple things we can do, but we're going to focus in on that that last one I mentioned. Uh, let's make some of our own alternate treats that don't have palm oil on it. So let's make it obvious. We're going to have to schedule some time right now. Let's do this right now. <laughs> we're we're going to schedule time to make those treats, and then when and then set an alarm to kind of to remind you again, making it as obvious as you possibly can. We're going to follow the recipe that I'm going to show, with, show you in just one moment. And then that makes it very, very easy just to follow the recipe, one, two, three. And then you get to celebrate by eating that awesome treat that you just made. So again, one of the rare instances where I say uh, you can, you can re reinforce yourself with some food. You get to, if you do all these process, go ahead, reward yourself with this awesome treat that is healthy, healthier for you, but also better for the environment. And we can go ahead, switch it on over. And once again, again, if you want to see how we can connect that to conservation and keep, and keep that momentum going, we can, we can go to the next slide. So what we're gonna to do tonight uh, I'm going to, we're going to switch back over here in a minute, 
I'm gonna let you guys let you guys take a screenshot of this if you'd like to. Um, or <laughs> bonus, it is in the book. <laughs> so if you would like to buy the book, this recipe is in the book. It's in uh, I believe it's week um, it's week three with our Mediterranean diet. And so what we're gonna do tonight is gonna make this so you can get a screenshot of this, and then um, Claire is going to move that back to me for just a moment. And I'm going to show what we're what we're going to have. We're going to be using protein powders. And I also was joking with Claire earlier that we could easily make this a um, a co-op. I mean, if you're from the Bellingham area, the co-op this could have easily been a a a, a commercial or a, a ad advertisement for the co-op because most of my ingredients I get from the co-op. Um, the the protein powder is my only exception. So whatever protein powder you choose, uh, we're going to do two servings of the protein powder. You're going to have about three tablespoons of, of um, coconut oil, three tablespoons of a nut butter, and then for the that's going to create your base. And then for your filling, I've got um, 15 medjool dates, a tablespoon of, um, of chia seeds, and then we're going to have some coconut milk, that I've divided up, and for and some uh, some fruit that we're going to use, as well as um, as some nuts, your choice of nuts, and some cocoa. I'm not sure. But there we go. And some co some cocoa. So that's what you're going to need for uh, for your protein bars. And Claire, if you want to go ahead and show them uh, the the next slide. The first couple steps, on which, and I will go ahead and, and let you guys let you guys see that for a little bit again. Uh, I don't expect you guys to write that whole thing down, but we're going to start with the nougat base. That's going to be the the protein powder, the uh, coconut oil, and the the nut butter. So you can use whatever nut butter you would like as well. So we can come back to me. And give you guys a little bit of chance to get a screenshot. So I've got the protein powder in a in a bowl, and I've got my uh, my coconut oil is is pretty softened. I'm gonna get about three tablespoons of the coconut oil. And then about three tablespoons of your nut butter. So again, this nut butter I did I did get it sounded interesting to me. It's like a huge blend. It's called nuts. So um, I don't know if anyone is familiar with this this blend, but it's got um, probably about six to eight different nuts, including pumpkin seed, um, hazelnut, Brazil nuts. So I'm gonna use three tablespoons of this. You can use whatever nut butter you like. If you like peanut butter, this still works really well for that as well. So we've got the, the mix for, this is gonna be for our base, and then I'm gonna mix it in and kind of create a paste. So if it's way too dry, you can, um, you can add a little bit more nut butter to it. If it's way too, uh, if, it's, or if it's way too wet, which usually isn't the case, um, but if it, if it is a little too wet, you can add just a little bit more of the protein powder. So I've got two servings of my protein powder. I'm using a chocolate. I have tried this with vanilla. It tastes just as amazing. <laughs> so it, you really can't go wrong <laughs> with your uh, with your protein powder. You can't go wrong with your with your nut butter that you choose either. So I'm going to mix this around until it's nice and again, as I mentioned in the in the description, pasty. And then once it's done, I'm going to transfer it to a, a, a parchment paper in a in a pan. I'm just going to transfer it to the pan, and then I'm spreading it all across the bottom. So this uh, this can get a little sticky, 
So it might take a little bit of time, but we're going to we're going to spray it all across the bottom of the pan. And then before we get started with the next couple of steps, we're going to put this pan into the freezer to let it chill because trying to smear the other nice couple of uh, uh, ingredients on top of it is going to be a little bit tricky. So we're going to place that into the freezer. And by the magic of television, I have a <laughs> I have one that has, that is pretty firm. So it, once it's firm, it's been in the freezer or in the refrigerator for a little while. It'll be nice and firm, and it'll be ready for you to take the, the next um, the next set of ingredients. So this is what we would call the nougat base. Now, next step, what we're going to do is make the uh, the date filling or that again very very sweet filling so what we're going to do is take this 15 dates one tablespoon of the chia seeds and going to need and one quarter cup of of milk and you can use uh you can use almond milk you can use regular milk um it's up to you but i've been i've been letting these uh, simmer for quite some time, very, very low heat. But what we're gonna you want to do is let them simmer with the uh, inside for about uh, for about five to seven minutes until it's nice and mixed. Very soft. This is super soft. I can mix it with my with my spoon. If it's not soft enough, you can definitely use a, a blender. Um, I'm actually going to find that. Since we're since this is soft enough, I I let it simmer long enough. I'm just going to mix it in the in the saucepan, um, mash it up. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, a little bit hard to see, but I'm mashing it up, mixing it up, and then I'm going to place it on top of my nougat nougat base. So once again, you can do it in the in a uh, blender if you need to. If you've gotten your uh, dates soft enough, you can do it right into the pan. And then we're going to ask ahead. you a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. So um, I noticed that you're using chia seeds, and I feel like chia seeds are just increasingly in recipes. I'm seeing I'm seeing them more and more and more. So what is What's um what's so great about chia seeds? What's the nutritional uh, boost for for those? Just like with any other seed, like pumpkin seeds and yeah, a very good question. Um, yeah, they are uh, they might just be a little bit of a fad, <laughs> um, but they they do they have the same benefits. They're, they're a seed, so my, a lot of the uh, of our fitness experts are saying to go back to more natural foods. That aren't um, that aren't milled, that aren't processed in any way, and um, and so they're they're going to mention fruits, nuts, uh, fruits, nuts, vegetables, and seeds, and that's going to be your chia seeds. Chia seeds to have a good source of both healthy, healthy fats and uh, and protein. So they're they're kind of a little uh, double group there. Um, Personally, I also like the fact they kind of give a little bit more texture to, to things that they they do. Um, you know, they thicken up nicely, and they just give a little bit more texture to certain certain ingredients. They don't really have much of a, I really don't notice much of a taste. Oh, okay. Well, um, I, I don't know if you know Larry, who's in the audience, but Larry says that they're also really great for um, growing chia pets. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Larry, for that recommendation. <laughs> now, final step. I'm going to just wash my hands off really quick. Our final step is going to be is to create a. I also forgot to mention. Oh, we're going to put some nuts or some fruit on there. Um, I'm gotten bad about measuring, so but I do think I put three tablespoons. So again, I got this mix at the co-op. Um, it's a mix, mixed berries. You can use whatever dried fruit that you desire. I stay away from the dates because that's just overkill. But um, other than that, 
I'm just going to sprinkle on a few uh, tablespoons of mixed nut of mixed berries. And this is a mix of um, goji berries, um, blueberries. Looks like I have some cranberries and raisins in here. So if you want to just use any one of those, if you want to use um, a completely different one, I've also uh, tried it with pine dried pineapple. I once again don't feel that you can go wrong with this. Our last step is going to be to create a little bit of a chocolate sauce. I'm not sure if we're going to quite have time for, for this. So I'm also probably in the next, yeah, we're in the next uh, page of, of the recipe. So if you guys want to take a look at that, let's take a quick look. Once again, grab your um, screenshot if you need to, or once again, not that I'm plugging a book or anything, it's in the book. <laughs> yes, we are plugging a book. It's in the book. <laughs> Shameless promotion. Yes. Shameless promotion. <laughs> and then it really won't take too long to do the to do the sauce, but I'm gonna put it over some heat and um, I'm gonna add the the three tablespoons of cocoa and the rest of the milk, so about a quarter cup. And this is perfect for me. Um, I have found that some people maybe they get a different type of cocoa. Maybe I have been, I've gotten really used to this uh, to this cocoa that I get from the um, from the co-op. Some people maybe they're getting a different kind of, of milk. I'm not sure if you if it's a little too watery. Add more cocoa. Uh, if it's not, uh, if it's too clumpy, then add some more. Um, add some more milk to it. But once you've got your a little bit of a sauce, I'm using a just a brush, like a, a barbecue brush, and I'm just kind of painting the uh, the sauce on. That's the best way I can describe it. You're going to paint the chocolate sauce over the the, the date mixture. And last, our last step is we're going to take our nuts, three tablespoons of nuts, and then just sprinkle it. So just like we just did with the fruit, just sprinkling the nuts over on top. What kind of nuts are you using there tonight? I'm using walnuts. Very good question. Once again, you can't go wrong. I've used walnuts, macadamia nuts, um, pecans, and even cashews. And so there we go. We are ready. Beautiful. Uh, uh, we're finished with our, with with this. Put it back in the fridge for a couple hours. Let it firm up, especially that um, that. The chocolate sauce and the the date mixture. Let it firm up in the fridge for a couple hours, and you're ready to go. My last instructions is to cut it up into about eight or nine bars. Try not to eat them all in one go. Is somebody uh, stepping on your cat's tail? Because that's what it sounds. Yeah, like. this is my handsome boy. <laughs> it sounds like he's getting his tail stepped on. Whoa, he's big. <laughs> <laughs> he's, my, he's my helper tonight. <laughs> and what's his name? This is Sullivan, and okay. he's named after the monster in Monsters Inc. So, okay, Sully, so nice. Is appropriate season for that. And that's our our uh, PJ's perfect protein bars, practically perfect protein bars. And we can go if you want to go back to the to the. Um, presentation for just a minute go to the next slide that is again that was from my from the Zufa Safari and this is how the Zufa Safari basically works we're going to take down we're going to break down those those healthy habits those goals that you have we're going to make it obvious I've got you're going to buy buying the book making that pretty obvious that's your cue that you're going to go on this fitness journey I'm making it Super easy for you. The book's got all of your meal plans for five weeks, all of the recipes, including the protein bars, and even grocery lists for you, plus the workouts, 
plus the healthy habits and that connection with conservation. And of course, if you can, finding your way, that's the best reward. You're not going to be questioning, what should I be doing anymore? You're going to know what is important for you, what's going to have the best impact for you, what is your way, and you're going to, again, have a lot more fun on your, in your fitness. Here you go to the next slide. And I actually am having a special challenge for, for you. So if you're, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this right now, and you're thinking, I'd like to, but I'm still just not sure if this is a good program for me, we got a, I got a program for you. What we're going to do is starting November 1st, I'm going to host the very first ZooFit Safari Challenge. So what you're going to get, you're, you get the book, and you get a, an extra accountability group um, for, the, for the next five weeks. From November 1st through December 6th, we're going to have a weekly class. I'm going to send you weekly classes that's going to help, uh, help you learn a little bit more about these healthy habits, how to install them. We're going to have group coaching classes so you can get some extra support. And we we'll also have access to more cooking demos, just like you just saw here, workouts and more, and as much motivation as you need, much support as you need for five weeks. Now, how do you get on this challenge? Uh, then what's the actual price? Again, super, super awesome <laughs> discount. What we're doing, since this is the first Super Safari Challenge, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so making it super easy <laughs> and awesome is all you have to do is buy the book, preferably from Village Books here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Preferably buy, buy the book from Village Books. Um, write a review on Goodreads or Amazon. Send me a screenshot of that review to pj at zoofit.net. Very easy to remember. pj at zoofit.net, and you're in. That's all you need to do to join the very first Zoofit Safari Challenge starting November 1st. So that's uh, that's my that's my pitch for you guys. Again, buy the book from Village Books. Give me a review. It doesn't have to be a five star. I'm not looking for five star reviews. I'm just looking for you to share with others what you're excited about, um, what what you're looking forward to, and then we'll get started with the with the with the Zufa Safari together. That's record timing there. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that it for slides? I, th I can't remember if there's. Yeah, that's it. Well, there might be one more with my information on this. So oh, one there you if you're looking for, if you're looking for ways to connect with me outside, um, outside this presentation, I am everywhere. You can email me at pj at zoofit.net. You can find me uh, on my website, zoofit.net, and I'm on YouTube. I do cooking demos pretty regularly, workouts pretty regularly. So you can find me on YouTube and on Facebook as well. I'm with Zoofit. And I have awesome. some, some time for some questions. All right. So um, I have questions. Well, first of all, um, oh, excellent. People are saying they're going to buy their the books and some people have said they just bought the book. Thank you. I want to show people that there's, these are full color, beautiful photographs. Did you take the pictures, PJ? Yeah. The, the photography is really, is really good. So these are, that's the page of the beautiful bars that you just made. Um, and <laughs> Sorry, Larry. I'm afraid you, you never know, Larry. Your cat might like it. Larry says his cat will not like um, like that. But anyway, the you have the chocolate bars, but if you have vanilla, that should be okay. <laughs> well, I love it. I mean, this whole this whole thing is great. I mean, you've got your suggested shopping lists, suggested menu, and then your shopping lists. Um, you have um, exercise recommendations, right? You. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, okay, so this is interesting to me. So, okay, I'm looking at your zoo fits running the zoo field, like, <laughs> like a field, field workout. So, so you've got, 
you, you warm up with the sloth, which I'm going to say that's like a gentle warm up, like maybe a, just a, a slow jog. Yeah, or fast. So our, our, I think I, I, yeah, I explained it in the book, but it, like a sloth is going to be something you could maintain forever. You could do that. For a very, so whether it's a slow jog or a, a walk, that's up to you. So you can do this walking or running. I, I don't want to pressure people um, right. into into activities that they don't enjoy. Um, so it's, it's your level. The uh, the giraffe is uh, is going to be a little bit. You know, you can do this. You're not breathing hard, but it's something that you probably couldn't do for a long time. You, uh, okay. And then you have your sprints, your, your <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that Sullivan likes the sprints. He doesn't like he doesn't like the, the cheetah. Oh, he does not like the sprints. <laughs> but this is great. I mean, so here you've got this whole like um this this workout here of how many laps you do, what you do for each lap. Um uh this is this is awesome. And some of these recipes, oh my gosh, they sound so good. You even have um, recipes using collard greens in here. I don't see too many, too many collard green recipes out out here. I grew up with I grew up with collards. <laughs> so, and you've got um, specifically paleo recipes. You have specifically keto yeah. recipes. Um, so there's there's a whole lot in here. Um, so let's see, does anybody, if you have any questions, um, Larry says, thanks PJ, seriously tying conservation diet and fitness together is genius. And, the, and it's true. Um, mm -hmm. this is, this is, this is t something totally unique to me. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a passionate about fitness and nutrition, but tying in conservation that that's, that's really, really special. Um, so thank you. Yeah, it, 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 it was one of those, why hasn't anyone thought of this before <laughs> for me? I think it's great that you taught at the Woodland Park Zoo. Yeah. Wow, what a great place. Oh. So um, let's see, will Village Books promote these treats with the book in Paper Dreams Treat Case? <laughs> oh. I would that like that. I might. I might need to, Kendra, I might need to... Um, approach the owners about Ooh. doing that you know you know the the treat case is reserved for the fudge that we make there but um but maybe we could maybe we could do f feature some uh zoo fit treats too i think that that's i think that that's a good idea there, yeah there's some other ones like the caveman candy um and and the energy balls that uh that i make um that, that I'm about to step on them. <laughs> yeah, the Kuna candy is a paleo treat. It's it's delicious too. And then the uh, energy balls is a vegetarian treat. Wonderful. No, it gives you lot, lots of dates in there too. So it'll give you enough uh, enough pep to, to get you through your, your workout. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking about, um, Larry says the cat is starving. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for for featuring so um, heavily palm oil. I, I I get so frustrated when I'm looking at ingredients, and it's like I cannot get away from either palm oil or high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. It's like they're just everywhere, and it and it makes me so angry. <laughs> so. Right. Again, the, the easy choice, the the easy solution is just cut it out. So making that easier is to have some alternatives that you enjoy that you know don't have palm oil in it. So again, um, it, yeah, it, the simple, simple decisions aren't necessarily easy, but yeah, zoo fit and and just again going through conservation can make those those decisions a little bit easier. Yeah. Well, we have one one final question from Kendra. She wants to know if you're going to create. Um, microwavable popcorn <laughs> if I, I if i will create it yeah without the palm oil <laughs> yeah. that could be you could that could be your your brand yeah, you could do it. It. <laughs> you know the interesting thing is that uh, we've eliminated 
person, we've eliminated popcorn from our diet. Just um, my husband and I, we, uh, I can't eat popcorn because of my teeth, and he can't eat popcorn because he's got uh, he's got health issues. That so neither one of us eat popcorn anymore, which is like a total bummer because that is such a healthy treat yes. that um, that you can just eat tons of and be completely fine. But um, yeah, well, health, healthy unless you're buying the you know the movie theater po yeah, microwave yeah. popcorn that is like so much butter. Um, and palm oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I I've done it. Yeah, you know, I've done it on the stove before. Even um, so, my my solution today is go to the co-op again. Not that I'm. I, they should pay me to come. Over I know yeah, this is quite the commercial for the co-op. Well done. But they do have dry. Uh, they have dry popcorn kernels. I know that for a fact that you can just, you know, again, I don't know if it microwave well, but you can put it on a stove top. And, um, yeah, that's what we've been doing. We've been making it on the stove top at home lately. Or um, Elaine says, use an air popper. That's true too. Yep. So. Wow. Well, PJ, thank you so much. This was extremely informative and, um, and I think that everybody in the audience will probably agree. And don't forget that you can buy the book from Village Books. Um, <laughs> And we have signed copies. And gosh, uh, any any last last word, PJ? Uh, again, my last words are usually always: let's eat clean, live green, train positive, and connect to the earth in a healthy way. All right. Well, thank you so much. On that note, I will say over and out. Yeah. Bye, bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs>